G'day, it's James here again from Content Snare and JimmyRose.me, and this is the latest on uh, the business automation series, uh, specifically with Zapier. Zapier, I gotta get used to that pronunciation. I don't think I ever will. Um, in this one, I just wanna go over how to actually set up a webhook to be caught in Zapier so that you can send it somewhere else. Um, so in the last video, we actually talked about the concept of a webhook so you can sort of understand exactly what it is and how it applies uh, to business automation. If you haven't checked that video out, um, I'll leave a link below so you can uh, jump over and watch that one first. Um, otherwise, let's set up a webhook. Basically gonna use the same example uh, from Active Campaign last time. Um, anyway, Right, so we're going to go to uh, choose a trigger app and we're gonna search for webhooks. And we're gonna catch a hook. So in this case, we're getting some data in from another app, which we're then going to send somewhere else. The retrieve poll is a little bit different. Uh, this is when you need to go out and get data. Um, it's a bit more advanced. Um, so we're just gonna catch it. I'm gonna leave this guy blank. And so at this point, this is when it generates the URL that we need to put in an, in another app. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that and go over to my active campaign automation. Whoops, this one. And um, again, this is pretty specific to active campaign. So um, it's different everywhere else. So there's probably usually a setting somewhere um, that will allow you to um, put in a URL. It might be in the settings, it could be in a developer area. It's different each time, but search, just search for whatever tool you're using and then webhooks on Google and it should be some instructions there on how to do it. Uh, so an active campaign, we're gonna post a webhook and the only thing it gives us is the URL because it's basically just gonna post um, all the data from whatever contact is in this automation currently. Um, all right, so I've done that. So I'm gonna click, I did this. Now it's basically saying, go and send some data to that address that we just put in. This is different in every app. So sometimes the, the best, the absolute best case in this is when an app might have a test button literally right next to where you put in the um, URL. And that's amazing because that this process takes about five seconds and you literally just go in, hit, send, uh, hit test and come back here and it'll um, change and catch it which we'll see in a minute. Uh, sometimes with act, uh, something like Active Campaign, I'm basically gonna um, change a contact to force it to go through this information, uh, sorry, through this automation and get to here. Um, sometimes you actually have to go and make a purchase or something uh, in, you know, maybe it's a test mode. It's really different every time, but basically you're gonna have to get this action or you know data to that um, URL that we put in. So in this case, an active campaign, I'm just going to make sure I'm going to change valid payment method to true for a contact, and um, make sure because we've got a condition here that they have the tag event personal video reminder. So this is my dummy contact. Looks like they've already got that uh, tag. So if I just change this to true, I should be able to. Uh, this thing will do its thing. Yep, so it's fired that automation. I'm gonna go back in and look, test successful. Boom, view your hook. And this is the data that's come in from Active Campaign. So I've got emails, I've got uh, custom fields that I've set up like a subdomain and whatever. Uh, there's that uh, valid payment method. So um, what I might wanna do with that now is create a Trello card or like a to-do. If you're using Asana, you might wanna create a to-do in Asana. Um, so I'm going to create a Trello. I'm going to create a card, which is what it uses for to do's. So let's say what I was doing here is if someone signs up um, to a paid plan, which is exactly what this is actually. Um, so they're valid. They've put a credit card into our software. Um, at the moment, I'm using this to send them a personal uh, remind myself to send them a personal video. Um, but what you might, the other option um, I'm going to set up here is to just go and contact them. This is just an example, right? So I'm going to choose the Trello account that I've previously set up. Um, I'm going to put it on so many things. My today list. And I'm going to say contact 
the guy's name. In this case, it's first name, last name, because these are all the things that it's pulled in from that test that we just did. So that test sent all this data to Zapier, and now we can use that. So I'm gonna say, uh, send an email to, and then I can pull in the email address uh, from the company name, or the org name as it's called in active campaigns. So then, that's basically gonna create a Trello card for me whenever um, someone puts in a credit card in, uh, in our app. So to, I'm gonna hit continue. Um, so you might wanna send and that'll actually create the card in Trello, but I'm gonna skip that for now. Um, continue, like we don't need this, I don't know how that got there. Um, and basically, oops, I've had a problem somewhere, I'm not sure where. Sometimes Zapier does weird stuff like this, um, so I just basically follow the links and eventually it, it's brought me back to here, so I'd um, give it a name and turn it on. So that's it, I've created a zap that will catch a hook and create a to-do item for me uh, in Trello. Simple as that.